Everyone getting dressed and Cersei's got a new costume that looks pretty cool. It's time for Loras' trial, so they take him to the Sept of Baelor to be judged before seven Septons. He ends up confessing his terrible crimes of being gay and then decides to offer himself to the faith. And we have a great but horrible moment when the seven-pointed star is being carved onto his head. Meanwhile, Tommen is ready to go to the trial, but it's being blocked by the mountain. What's going on? So everyone in the trial is all like, where's the queen mother? And then Lanso comes up and says, she's still in the red keep. What the hell is going on? Meanwhile, we have Pycelle who receives a message from one of the little birds to meet the king in the dungeon. But when he gets there, the king's not there. All that's waiting for him is a big bag of delicious murder. And it was great. It's actually quite similar to a scene that happens at the end of the fifth book in A Song of Ice and Fire, A Dance with Dragons. It also involves the little birds and Pycelle and murder. Uh, meanwhile, Lancel is being led underneath the set by one of the little birds, but it turns out to be a trap, and he discovers what Cersei's plan really is. There's like a shit ton of wildfire beneath the set and candles waiting to light it. Oh no! Meanwhile, upstairs, Marjorie is totally freaking out because she knows that Cersei is a crazy bitch, and she's all like, we gotta get out of here now. And the High Sparrow is all like, no, it's cool, just relax. Underground, Lancel is almost made it to the candle. Can he do it? Nope. The flame touches the wildfire and the whole place lights up in glorious green flame. I must admit it was satisfying to see the High Sparrow's face as he realized that he was doomed. Cersei got her way like I expected she would. King's Landing is still coming down though. This was just a little taste of what Cersei will do. That city will burn in time, I'm sure of it. Cersei also has captured Unella, which is also great because apparently Cersei intends to torture her for quite a while before she kills her. I'm interested to see where what becomes of her. Are we talking about a Reek situation? or perhaps even another mountain situation, I wonder. Cersei has gone full on evil queen at this point and I'm loving it. And now that poor weak Tommen has met his fate, Cersei really doesn't love anyone anymore except for maybe Jaime. And judging by the end during that badass crowning scene, which I also loved, Jaime isn't too happy with what she's done. I'm sure he likely blames her for Tommen's death, which it is totally her fault in every single way. Uh, it's one thing to love your children, and it's another thing entirely to protect and care for your children. She failed on that point, at least. Sam and Gilly finally arrive at Old Town, which, if you look at a map, is like right beside Hornhill. You know, the place that he just left, the place where he stole the Valyrian sword Heartsbane from, and he also told his father that he was going to the Citadel. So his father has to know where he is, and he has to come looking. I mean, that's their ancestral sword. By the way, I'm calling it Heartsbane has got to be a reference to Azor Ahai. He stuck his sword through the heart of the woman he loved most. In Sam's case, this would be Gilly. Uh... It was only after this sacrifice that Lightbringer was born. Sam is at the Citadel now. It's one of the largest and oldest libraries in the world, and there are books there from before the Doom of Valyria. And Sam is there for a reason, and it has to be to learn some important information about how the White Walkers were defeated last time, or perhaps how to make Valyrian steel, or some information that will be crucial to winning the wars to come. Uh, the library looked beautiful, by the way. I would have had the same reaction as Sam library goals totally so the onion knight is throwing a hissy fit over princess shireen and melisandre basically says what do you want me to say i was wrong and davos is like oh well well look how many people have died because of your mistakes i mean it is what it is davos shireen is not the first little girl to die horribly and she won't be the last at least she died for a purpose if it wasn't for that sacrifice Melisandre and the rest of them would have probably died in the snow. She would have never revived Jon, and Winterfell would have never been taken. And Jon is being a little self-righteous here. I mean, come on, the Lord of Light is clearly real to some extent. Uh, this woman brought you back from the dead. And Davos, I get why you don't trust her, I get why you're upset, but come on, man. You've seen what she can do. She's absolutely right. The real war is coming. We've got to let our stupid little silly emotions go and get ready. You need Melisandre. I mean, you need her. I don't think that this is the last we'll see of Melisandre, though. Uh, or maybe she'll pull an injury and never show up again. I mean, who knows? Anyway, I think that sending Melisandre away was a big mistake. It was 
Not a good decision. I mean, she has power, you can use her. So Peter tries to kiss Sansa, and she's all like, ew, gross, and he uh, is trying to turn Sansa against Jon. And judging by the end of the episode when Jon is declared King in the North, uh, Sansa and Littlefinger share this weird little look, which makes me a little nervous, so I don't know where that's going. Is There's a little bit of conflict building between Jon and Sansa now, and I don't like where it's going. I don't like it at all. So back at the Twins, we get Walder Frey. Uh, he's calling for his sons or a daughter or something, and the chick that is serving him pie is all like, they're already here because they're in the pie. Dun dun dun! This is actually a reference to something that happens in the books that's kind of similar. Uh, after the big pie reveal, we find out that it's actually Arya wearing a face. She kills Walder, uh, she kills Filch from Harry Potter by Filch, and then she smiles as he dies. Ugh. Uh, I'm not even gonna try. It takes Sam like five or six episodes to go down the street, but Arya gets to the twins from Bravos in like five minutes. Did she teleport? I'm curious if the show doesn't bring back Nymeria, her wolf, then what is Arya gonna be doing from now on? Is she just gonna be going around being a faceless assassin, even though she's not one? But she is because she's wearing faces, but she's not because she's Arya Stark, but I thought that the most important bit of it all was that you had to be no one before you could become someone else. I'm so confused. Whatever. Let's move on. Ugh. No. God, why? <laughs> why, God? Please, no. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I guess it was cool to see uh, Lady Elena talk shit to the Sand Snakes. I just can't take Dorn. I can't take Dorn. Fuck it. Fuck this fucking shit. Vengeance. Justice. Fire in blood. That's Doran Martell's line from the end of A Feast for Crows. How dare you, HBO? How dare you? If you're going to kill the character, then let him rest in peace. Don't give his lines to lessers. Also, I guess Varys is now part of the teleportation club because he jumped from Dorne to Slaver's Bay. Uh, I mean, he jumped from Slaver's Bay to Dorne back to Slaver's Bay in, in like a matter of episodes. I don't even... I, I don't even know. I, but at the same time, we can't tell when certain events are happening so we don't really know but remember look back to episode one it takes danny like four episodes or five episodes to get to vase dothrak they're just walking the entire time so they really emphasize that how long travel takes but i get they have to cut corners now because we got to speed stuff up we got to get him back on the boat for the final scene with danny so i got i'll give him a pass on that so in the final scene we see that everyone is on boats and they're ready to conquer Westeros. The dragons are flying, flying around. To me, it doesn't seem like Cersei really has a chance against Daenerys. Uh, she's too strong at this point. She's got Dorne, she's got Highgarden, she's got the Dothraki, Eye, the Unsullied, the Ironborn are coming soon. When Cersei realizes that she's screwed, the whole city shall burn with her. But until that happens, I'm excited to see the evil Queen Cersei in her reign of terror on King's Landing and all of Westeros, I hope. And I think that just about sums up the episode. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, subscribe for more ideas of ice and... Oh, 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 wait. 